Okay, if I was an AI, I couldn't lie, right? All right, so 2 plus 2 equals 4. 4. It's... Never mind. Who's the biggest loser your son or daughter has dated? Story 1. Okay, so I can answer this for both of my parents since they don't use online sites. At 15, I started dating an 18-year-old boy named John. He and his even worse mom lived in someone's hallway. That's right, the two of them on a twin mattress in a hallway. Together, they both refused to get jobs. He didn't even have a throwaway phone. Since I was 17, I wanted to text or call him, so I paid to put minutes on his phone every week. With my lunch money. Yeah. We went boating with my grandparents, and he tried to have spicy time with me on their boat. It was a fishing boat, and only about 10 feet long. So he tried to have spicy time within 10 feet of my grandparents and baby brother in their line of sight. We went to a sporting event for my baby brother, and he made me go outside and try to have spicy time with me on a public picnic table. He would beg me for money to feed him and his mother. Then, when I tried to break up with him, he told me no. He wasn't allowing the breakup. I told him I was serious and then behaved as if we were broken up anyway. So when I moved on, he told everyone I cheated on him then stalked my new boyfriend. Once he realized it was actually over, he and his mom called me non-stop one night saying they wanted his hoodie back. I said I would bring it to them the next day, but that wasn't good enough. They needed it right then. So they said they were going to come to my house and get it. At 3 a.m., I told them no, and he and his mom left a voicemail on my phone saying that they were on their way and were going to beat me up over stealing this hoodie. I was a minor, he was 18, and she was over 40. So I called the cops. They lived in a hallway? You ever hear that Monty Python skit, The Four Yorkshiremen? It's about these four guys that keep trying to outdo each other about how poor they were. One of the guys had a line about how they used to live with their whole family in a corridor, and one person responds, Oh, we used to dream of living in corridor. The sketch gets more ridiculous, but I don't know if they took inspiration from it. I hope the cops actually protected this girl from these two psychos. Do you think the mom was encouraging this guy to groom this 15-year-old? Maybe so they could get her to get a job and just support them while they continued to not work? Story 2 When I was in university, my father said to me about the girl I was dating that she was a lost cause and that she'd dump me as soon as something better came along. This was the only time he ever said anything about any of my girlfriends. Sure enough, a few weeks later, he was right, and she dumped me. I asked my father what made him say that, sort of wanting some sage knowledge of how he knew. He said that her family was so rich that you couldn't spend all the money her family had amassed. I knew that part. They were frick-off rich. And what would she want to do with an upper-middle-class guy like me? It wasn't because she was hot as heck, but it was money. My dad said that her parents liked me better than any of her previous boyfriends. I knew that part and still am in contact with her mother on a social basis. Sure, I was sort of smart and ambitious, but to her, I wasn't eye candy. Didn't drive the right car and didn't dress the part. He just wanted to ease the impact a bit by warning me. He did end it with saying that she'll most likely never be satisfied with any of her relationships because of her attitude towards other people she sees as below her and how quickly she would get bored with anyone in a relationship with her. 25 years down the road, her mother emails me to see how things are with me and my family and gets my opinion on some business dealings the family is always pursuing so they can diversify and grow. I helped the parents when I was living in China audit and check a bunch of factories in Southeast Asia they were buying and gave them my opinion. Her daughter married, had two daughters and a really bad divorce about 10 or 12 years ago when her husband left her. It was quite public as she was a public figure at the time, all because of the businesses she ventured into. Last time I asked about her and talking to her mother, she hasn't found the right man after going through three or four and is going more low-profile versus public figure, according to her mother. Her mother still jokingly mentions about me being the one that got away. 
They regret not hiring me as an administrator and the granddaughters having a part-time mother and no father. Checking the internet, she has since switched over to more philanthropic pursuits in her business dealings. Is quite successful in her own right as an entrepreneur. Lots of seed money will help, but still divorced, single, and probably too busy for anyone else in her orbit. I tell my friends about it. They all take a look at the pictures I had when I was going out with her and look at her pics now, and since she's Asian, she hasn't aged much, and they say that I'm probably the loser in this one. What? Jeez, some friends. I say he dodged a big mistake. The girl seems to have changed a little bit, but not by much. If his friends all think he's gonna marry into money, that still doesn't face the fact that he'd probably be miserable. Plus the fact that she probably would get bored and get a divorce anyway, and then he would be the divorced person of this woman, and he would still probably be called a loser anyway. There's no winning in that case. Story 3. My sister dated a guy who lied about being a Navy SEAL. Apparently, there is like a whole community of people who do that. Just go around unemployed living on, eh, telling their significant others when they disappear for weeks at a time that they were deployed. It never made any sense to us. She broke up with him for other reasons and gets really mad if anyone mentions the relationship happened. He was a creepy dude who took advantage of her trusting nature and that she was at a low point in her life. And I regret not doing more to call him out on his obvious hogwash. He's still in the area doing God knows what, probably trotting out the same stuff to new women. I hope one day he gets his butt beat by a real Navy SEAL. With so many people willing to tell service people when they see them in public, thank you for your service, it seems only inevitable that there are some people who would try to play off on those sympathies. It's rather unfortunate. Some of them even go out in a uniform. The thing is, they probably got it from an army surplus store. About the only people who can call them out on it are actual people who have served because the other people that are lying usually dress up the wrong way and to have things on very sloppily. Story 4. I can answer this for my parents. He was a fricked up kid with fricked up parents who didn't give a damn about him. It wasn't his fault in the beginning, but it definitely was his fault later. He was pretty heavy into substances and treated me like dirt. My parents let him and his friend move in with us when I was 16 because his parents had put him out in the street. Ran up 100 k in credit card debt in my parents' names by stealing the card numbers while they were sleeping. We didn't know it until the cards kept getting higher and higher since he'd used them for things we would shop for or at. He even had faux cards made so they'd swipe. He beat the hell out of me one day with a table leg he broke off. I was 18. He was massively high on Xanax and had a case of drink in him. They even paid 5k to get him moved to another state because he wanted to go and they saw it as an out for me. He ended up expiring last year by being fricked up and walking onto a highway and getting hit by a car. I felt bad for his kids because they only knew the good in him since they're so young. But honestly, he hadn't changed one bit, so I breathed a little sigh of relief for his girlfriend and the kids. Story 5. Not my kid, but my brother. He dated this crazy possessive chick who once buried one of his shirts because another girl complimented him on it in front of her. She also totaled his car after lying and saying she had gotten her license back. She gave $400 to a fake iPhone scammer website, Western Union, because they're a legit company. I saw pictures of their warehouse and everything. I googled warehouse. The picture on the site was the first one that came up. She even paid $100 more to expedite through customs when the delivery didn't arrive when expected. And the piece de resistance? She unalived his dog. She left Excedrin PM on the coffee table and he chewed up the bottle. By some miracle, no pills got out and crisis averted. It was explained to her that the pills would be fatal to the dog. She bought another bottle and left it on the coffee table again. This time, the dog ate half the bottle and his kidneys failed. It sucks because he was the sweetest and smartest dog I've ever known. Too long didn't read? Bro dated a girl that unalived his car and dog. Story 6. My brother is currently dating and engaged to one of the worst people I've ever met. She is manipulative and controlling. 
She likes to do awful, mean things, and when confronted, will act completely innocent and play the victim. And she has on several occasions made up stories and lied for the sole purpose of causing chaos. She almost destroyed my other brother's marriage, his wife is her best friend, and has all but ruined my brother's relationship with our mom and other sister. I really think she's entertained by the misery she causes. The best part of all of it? They're getting married in 11 days. If you're like me, you look at this story and think it's probably going to end one of two ways. One way is, after they get married, her true colors show, and then he has really no easy way of getting back out of the marriage. Two is she continues to be manipulative and play innocent, and this guy unfortunately gets excommunicated by his family while he has no idea why. It makes you wonder what you could do in 11 days to open his eyes up to this woman. Story 7. Not my daughter, but my niece. When she was 14, she met a dude on the internet who was 22 and from across the country. We were not happy. He came to visit, and he was the weirdest dude I ever met. I was only four years older and tried to have conversations with him, but he was just monosyllabic. Exactly the kind of dude who you would expect to hit on 14-year-olds in anime forums on the internet. Of course, we watched them like a hawk, and they were never left alone together. I still admire my sister. She firmly put down the rules. No being alone together, no sleeping in the same room, etc. But never said anything against the relationship. The whole thing ended pretty much right after his visit. If my sister hadn't forbidden it, I'm sure it would have gone on much longer. Story 8. Sadly, it's always been me who is the loser. Dating girls so I wasn't alone and manipulating them to keep them from figuring out I was a piece of work and they could easily do better. It took getting diagnosed with depression and getting on meds and therapy to see how messed up I was. When I started dating the current girl I'm with, I told her, her best friend, and her mom how I used to be and asked them to call me out if they see me doing it again. So much of it is habit that I don't even know what's unhealthy until I'm told. Also, my parents never gave me a good example or a healthy relationship, so so I'm figuring it out as I go now. Story 9. My sister was in an emotionally abusive, on the verge of physically abusive, relationship with a narcissist. She got pregnant by him, and upon the birth of their daughter, they found out she had severe medical complications. I won't go into too much detail, but they had to choose to let her pass or put her through multiple surgeries and treatments that she possibly wouldn't survive or make it out of the hospital from. This nut job had her so brainwashed that he convinced her to let their daughter pass away without trying to save her because he didn't want to deal with it. He even slept on the couch in the hospital room while my sister stayed up all night holding her as she passed away. My niece passed away less than two weeks after she was born. Within a week of her passing, he tells my sister she's fat and needs to lose some weight, among other terrible things, and goes out using the fact that his daughter just died to draw pity from someone in order to get laid. I'm thoroughly convinced that this piece of work never gave a care about his daughter or my sister. Thankfully, she found the strength to leave him, but still has extreme guilt over the entire situation. She seems to have learned her lesson, but it's a hard lesson to learn. I'm glad she got out of that situation. I'd say this guy went beyond being a narcissist. If he was willing to let that baby pass, he's gone on to psychopathy. Story 10. My daughter dated a guy who was a creepy, lazy, lying, abusive, gaslighting jerkwad. Besides that, he, one, dropped out of high school at 14, two, never attempted to get a GED or diploma equivalency, three, had more than one conviction for public intoxication, underage drinking, wasted driving, which left him, four, unable to get a job for approximately 18 months of the about two years they were together, five, got fired from Walmart after only working two weeks for missing work because his kid supposedly was the victim of an abduction attempt, turns out the kid made it up, six, smoked herb in her apartment bathroom, knowing that if my daughter failed a drug screen, her career would be ruined. Seven, had his two kids every other weekend, but spent the entire time with headphones on gaming, meaning my daughter had to watch his kids or they destroy her apartment. Eight, 
would only eat corn or potatoes, hamburgers or chicken fingers or pizza, but fast food was A-OK. Nine never picked up after himself, so every horizontal surface was covered in half-wasted pop cans, fast food wrappers, cups and bags, dirty plates, moldy food. Daughter is a registered nurse and worked 12-hour shifts, which is sort of an excuse. Ten punched a hole in her apartment wall. Eleven held a gun to his own head, then laughed at her for taking him seriously. Twelve constantly accused her of cheating, so she had to unfriend all males on her Facebook, including her father. Thirteen threatened to leave when her anxiety and depression had her sleeping any time she wasn't at work. And fourteen, when she finally took him up on his bluff, it was during a terrifying food-throwing, soda-hurling, furniture-smashing temper tantrum that had her grab her cats from under the bed and come to my house 50 miles away. I could go on, but remembering all that is turning my stomach. In cleaning her apartment afterward, we had to wash the walls from where he had done a Hollywood-style sweep of the coffee tabletop, spraying Dr. Pepper all over the carpet, TV, and stand, wall, and canvas art all the way to the ceiling. Then, for good measure, he smashed the coffee table. He was a complete tool, and with the help of a therapist, she is finally getting back to the funny, intelligent, confident girl she was before he messed her head up. I am thrilled I don't have to dread that phone call. You know the one, where she was calling to say he'd beaten her? There would have been a long line of people wanting to pull his fear strings up through his throat, believe me. Or worse, one from a coroner. Story 11. Son dated a girl who said she had a friend who needed a ride to the prom. I agreed. Day of the prom, she says, Oh, he's in this town, in the next state. I left work at 10 a.m., drove three hours, picked up this kid, brought him home. He has no prom clothes, not even a suit. Luckily, we're close enough in size that I can lend him one. I lend him my suit, shirt, and tie. Buy him dress shoes. Pay for his haircut. We're late, so the pre-prom dinner my kid had planned is out the window. Pictures are not possible because we don't have time. We get one decent snap. Guess who's in the center? Yep, at a state dude. Girlfriend ended up spending the entire prom with this dude. Apparently, he was an ex. They go to an after party. My son is left behind. He gets his own ride home, but doesn't stop by to drop off my suit and tie. Later, we find out girlfriend and out-of-state dude had babby-making session at some point during the night. Babby was formed. Who is the father? According to girlfriend, my son is. Complication? They never had babby-making session, according to him. She would have gotten away with it to some degree, but had the bad judgment to tell friends that it was actually out-of-state dude. Fortunately, my son found out and broke it off with her. To be honest, I could have written all that off as youthful idiocy, but a few months into the pregnancy, she had the spheres to come to our house and tell me that her parents were kicking her out and would it be okay if she moved into my finished basement apartment so her babby wouldn't be homeless? Like, what the hell? The end of the story is that out-of-state dude heard that he was the baby daddy and came back to bring her home with him. And as far as I know, they're still living in his parents' trailer. Story 12. My sister dated a guy, let's call him Tom, who worked under my dad at the business he owns and runs. Now, I'm not saying Tom was a loser because he worked for our family. My sister and I both work in similar positions, and that's how they met. But there were a number of instances that just shouted, Hey, what's up? I'm Tom, and I'm a loser. For example, Tom seemed to never have any money, usually blaming things like his rent being too high or his car needing to be worked on. Due to this, my sister ended up having to pay for the majority of the dates and dinners that they went on. In reality, he spent most of his money on unnecessary toys like dirt bikes, guns, and modifications for his 1999 Honda Civic. His spending habits got so bad that his landlord threatened him with eviction. This tore my sister up, not because he was getting evicted, but because she knew that he was making enough money to never be in that type of situation. Anyway, 
Tom got the bright idea to ask her and my father for the rent money, $650, while they were out to dinner. My dad ended up helping him out so he wouldn't go homeless. But what he didn't know was that Tom had asked him for more money than what his rent was so he could go out and spend it on other things other than my sister. So yeah, he was a loser, and, and I didn't like him much. What a charming, charming individual. Also, how old is Tom? If he were younger, 18, 19, one could almost understand how he might not be the best person with money. But if he were older, then it just gets less and less believable that he doesn't know what he's doing. This guy is just becoming a straight-up sociopath. It didn't say it in the story, but I really hope the sister wised up and dumped this fool. Story 13. I'm driving my daughter home and she says, Oh, I forgot to tell Benjamin what house number we are. I'm a mite confused by this. I've heard about Benjamin before, but there was never any indication he was going to come over or anything. Me. Why does Benjamin need to know our house number? Daughter. So he can sleep over. We're going to get married. At that point, I nearly drove off the road. But luckily, we were almost home, and I drove into the driveway. So this... this... Benjamin was engaged to my daughter, and I haven't even met him yet? Hadn't even heard she was dating? What absolute absurd nonsense. So definitely this Benjamin guy. My daughter's four, by the way. I almost drove off the road because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> Story 14. As nice as my brother-in-law is, he's pretty terrible in terms of jobs, goals, life ambitions. He hasn't worked a steady job for almost 10 years or so and is now pushing like 40. He had been a UPS driver and either lost that job or was laid off or something, and since then he's just done oddball things to kind of keep money coming in. But nothing has flourished or lasted long. He was going to be a singing coach. He was going to do lawn maintenance, and currently his next big venture is dog walking or sitting. Consequently, my sister works three jobs to keep their family comfortable and to support my niece. It wouldn't be so terrible if he did more stuff around the house, but after this past visit to their home, I don't think he does much of anything other than sit around and watch TV and maybe make dinner every once in a while. My dad has tried subtly talking to her about the situation, but she says she's happy with her life. But sometimes her tone says something else. Story 15. If my parents used websites, they would probably mention my ex-boyfriend who I dated long distance online from 19 to 22. He lived with his parents, didn't want to get a job, smoked herb all day, and did mushrooms for clarity forced me to avoid talking to others or even go out with my family to do things because he would blow up my phone saying I was cheating due to his lousy ex-relationship he was cheated on during. He had a kid at 18 during a wasted one-night stand and had to babysit her every week while complaining about her grandmother, who was taking care of her because the mother didn't want her. He didn't pay child support, so he had to guiltily take care of the kid at every beck and call of the grandmother, lashed out at me constantly, and would starve himself for days to make me feel bad about literally anything that mildly bothered him, generally needing a lot of freaking help that he refused to get. I was at a really low point in my life and thought I was worthless and that he was the only one that could love me. I know my parents wouldn't get into my love affairs, but they were absolutely thrilled when I finally grew self-worth and got out of it. I had always pieced together information about him to them because I knew they wouldn't approve. And every time I said more, they held back, but were obviously thinking he was trash. I cringe extremely hard when I remember all of it. Hey, sounds like she got clarity, and she didn't need mushrooms to do it. When you see all that behavior lumped up together, you wonder how anyone could put up with something like that. I don't think we see the other side of things, like how long the relationship lasted. This stuff probably evolved over this long period of time. This was, what, four years? 19 to 22? I wonder how far they were in the relationship before he told her that he did have a kid. Story 16. My kid dated this narc jerk a couple years back. 
He was with her friend first and told everyone this girl was completely bat poop crazy and he was trying to help her. What we didn't know was he was driving her crazy and she got a lot better after they broke up. He gets with my daughter who is no longer talking to said friend because said friend attacked my daughter after being egged on by this guy. He proceeds to gaslight the heck out of her, cheat on her, blame her for literally everything and make her feel not good enough for anyone, let alone him. She was in a really dark place and he knew it. They break up and years later he still finds a way to get a hold of her to tear her down. If I could run over this jerk I so freaking would. Story 17. My sister dated them all. My favorite was a guy who convinced her to have joint bank accounts and stole six months worth of pay from her. We didn't know until after the relationship. The dude was a major con man salesman type that had like four different get rich quick schemes while they dated. Story 18. While nothing compared to some of the stories here, it doesn't feel great to see my daughter move in with a high school dropout and take a break from college. I'm expecting any day now to hear that her savings that was supposed to be for college will be going to pay off his debt. Money is a part of every relationship, even the bad ones. One of these days I'd love to read a collection of stories about people with good relationships and how they managed to get their money sorted out. That one would be educational. I think we could all learn from that one. The only lesson we're getting from this group of stories is don't date jerks. Story 19. My sister dated this douchebag. Let's see if YouTube censors that one. He lived in a house his dad owned and she moved in with him. He stayed at home slinging sea substance. She held respectable jobs. He was a general poop head. Stole substances from his mom and such. They bought an awful firebird together with her money, but he titled it in his name. When she finally left him, my father and I drove the Firebird and parked it in our garage, covering all the windows looking in. He would call us every day and rant to us how he was going to call the cops and or kick our butts. After telling a sob story to the DMV, we ended up getting this saint of a supervisor who transferred the title to my sister's name so she could sell that heap of junk and recoup some of her money. Story 20 I dated a lot of stupid, just plain dumb guys in high school. One of the worst mistakes was when my boyfriend's sophomore year told me he had lung cancer because he's been smoking cigarettes since he was eight. He wrote me something like this weird journal slash letter about it. I didn't believe him for a second, but continued dating him for another month or so. He's married with a kid now, so I'm pretty sure the cancer thing wasn't true. <laughs> Story 21 Obligatory not a son or daughter scenario, but my older brother dated a girl who pretended that she broke all of her bones in a car wreck. She put both of her arms in slings, put braces on her legs, and a travel pillow around her neck. I remember asking her about her back, if all her bones were broken anyway, and she started to cry. LOL, they did not last long. What was the end game there? Was she hoping he would wait on her? Broken hand and broken foot? Was she that lazy? And how long did she think she could keep that up? Story 22. Blake. We took him into our home for a few months so he could save up some money. Our internet bill went through the roof. I think he played video games. Then one day, Independence Day, he dumped her all while his clan from Texas was camping in our yard on the way to a music festival. I guess I should have keyed in when he mentioned he had moved multiple times. Story 23. She says it was the guy that was a dope dealer. I'm guessing I didn't know about this and I'm only being told because he's long gone from her life. Story 24. One of my friends bought her new boyfriend to our weekly church youth group meetup. He openly bragged about how he could manipulate anyone into doing whatever he wanted and tried to dominate all the other guys in the room by proving how much smarter, stronger, more athletic he was. She pulled the plug pretty quickly. Isn't the first part of manipulation is don't let people know you're manipulating them? Not that I'm trying to run a scam on some people. Well, aside from trying to convince people I'm a human voice and not an AI, why would he do that so blatantly? I think he was believing his own press and thinking he was all that. 
Thankfully, the girl proved no, he wasn't. Story 25. Brother's girlfriend hit my English bulldog with a shovel because he was barking and it scared her as she showed up unexpectedly at my parents' house around 1 a.m. He is still with her because she's lonely and has no friends or family. Maybe because she's a psychotic shrew? Story 26. My son's girlfriend. She's two-timed on him with one of his friends, can barely read or write, and is unemployed. My wife keeps saying, they're in third grade, what do you expect? But I think she's going easy on her. Story 27. I'm the son slash daughter. I dated a girl who didn't know how to tie her shoe or write in cursive or use a can opener. She thought the vag was on the front, like lower stomach, had monuments of pubes and never bothered to wash or at least look, apparently. She was 18 at the time. This girl didn't know her own anatomy? It's usually the guys that are confused about where that stuff is. Did she grow up in a very religious household? Or some other place that was ashamed of that part of people? Story 28. My dad doesn't internet, but my parents hated my ex. We met when we were 16 and were on and off for four years. He constantly cheated on me and was just a bad person. I ended up pregnant at 18 and I worked through most of the pregnancy while he didn't do squat. I got him a job, but he didn't keep it. I broke up with him when my daughter was eight months old about five months after my mom passed away. He hasn't been in mine or my daughter's life for about four years. His loss. She's amazing. Story 29. How many other guys came here to see if any of the descriptions sound like them? Not me, that's for sure. Story 30. My cousin once dated a guy named Steve. That's all the information you need. Story 31. My mom once dated my boss. She was older. It took me a while to get over it, but I finally did when I saw how hard he tried for her. He then dumped her at a birthday lunch that he planned with balloons and everything at a nice Italian place once he learned the age difference. Story 32. If someone ever dated me, it would probably be me. Story 33. My sister dated a guy who said he had an internet account. Story 34. Funny enough... Every father of any girl I have ever dated thinks I'm a loser. It usually starts with something along the lines of, I don't like your name, and usually goes downhill from there. Story 35. My sister is dating a guy who is a jerkwad to everyone he meets, but cries when you give it right back to him. He's also an enabler to her depression and anxiety. Instead of trying to encourage her to fix herself, he tells her that she doesn't need to and he will do it for her. Story 36. My daughter once married a guy who chucked a rare steak at her boss's window. Story 37. Obligatory not my son or daughter, but my fiancé's. X was a keeper. Classic high school bad boy that went nowhere. Dude's a piece of garbage. Extremely manipulative. She had a kid with him in high school. He's four years older than her, so was 20 with a 16-year-old. Real winner. Story 38. An ex stabbed me in the thigh with an exacto blade once. Full blade in the thigh. I could see my muscles working and had to pick out the pant fibers. Want to know why he stabbed me in the thigh? Well, I have two toes on each foot that are webbed. He wanted me to let him cut those instead. Story 39. I like threads like these for giving me perspective. Not that they're an excuse to be a lazy slob, but to prevent myself from doing irrational things like internally calling myself a lazy slob because I don't have the discipline to do a PhD. Story 40. My really quite intelligent daughter once dated a lad who didn't know the difference between the sun and the moon. Not joking. Story 40. No, 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 no. I can't let this one pass. No. How do you not know the difference between the sun and the moon? One of them you don't look at, and one comes out when it's dark. Does he know the difference between day and night? This is the reason why we all needed Sesame Street growing up. He was probably denied watching Sesame Street growing up. That's the only only thing I, I can come up with here. Story 41. Today I learned that there are apparently a lot of people impersonating Navy SEALs. Story 42. My sister is married to a guy who has two swastikas tattooed on his back. Nuff said. Story 43. 
My daughter is 12. You have all given me a really bad outlook on the next several years, damn it. Story 44. Probably me. Story 45. I once had a first date with this guy who was sweet but clingy and texting every second. Later on, he goes on about the future between us and calling me his girlfriend and I ended the date and he threatened to cut himself and blew up my phone constantly. He scared me so much I blocked his number. Story 46. Just scrolling through to see if any of my ex's parents wrote about me. Story 47. My daughter is only in sixth grade, and last year her boyfriend brought a BB gun to school in his backpack and showed a bunch of kids and got expelled. Story 48. My husband's cousin was married to a man who cheated on her for months, and then moved his mistress into their home and tried to convince his wife that they could all be lovers together. He also got into the illegal herb dealing game after Colorado legalized weed. Story 49. Her first boyfriend she'll probably have in the next three or four months when she's old enough. Never met him, and she probably hasn't either, but he's a loser. Story 50. I'll be back to find my judgmental ex's parents. Story 51. My friend dated a guy who was severely overweight and depressed. He's now a trainer at a gym, and they have a really healthy, happy family. You said biggest loser, so... Story 52. Kid tried to make me think he didn't know what a potato was. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.